Hello. Hello, Merrick. Hey, hey, Michael, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, man. I'm, I'm you happy to, to meet you over a screen, but I'm, I can't I'm, wait to meet you in I'm, person. Yeah, it's the same. I'm proper happy to meet you over the screen as well. <laughs> You know, I like, what is that? What, what are you wearing? A little, is that a little G what, what What is that that you're wearing? Yeah, I'm in a little G lay, a, a nice summer number as we're yeah. getting the nice weather. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just chilling, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not wearing nothing as fast. Oh, I, can, I can tell you're very smart, actually. I'm, you know, it's just, just chilling. Home and attire. You've got, you've got a, you've got, we've got a similar gold bangle, I think. Did you? you know, yeah. There we yeah. go. It's, it's, little bangle, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, little I like it. Love. Yeah, a bit of bangle love. I like it. I like it. Do you know what? It's it's a bit unfortunate that, you know, the 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 well, it's I don't know, it's a bit of a catch for me too that the weather's actually nice, but we're both stuck indoors. You yeah. know, and we can't really do anything. Yeah. How you been finding quarantine? We've been yeah. um, well it's you know, I'm 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 able to sketch and create and work from home. I've got some of my team working again remotely from home. So nice. with the use of, of the internet, we can pass images across and, nice. and I can do mini design reviews. But at the end of the day, I can't put a full size clay model in my living room. So yeah, I, I need to get back to the studio. I think that's the greatest thing actually about like being like an ideas person that you can actually create from we, we can, you can do it anywhere you know yeah. i mean a lot of a lot of times actually you sometimes you have creative thoughts in your sleep yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know i typically sometimes will either wake up and write it down or wake up and, and put the sketch down that i thought about so i mean creativity is it's 24 7 it's yeah. it's not i never consider what i do or how i got into this as a job so your your mind is constantly buzzing in that respect yeah, hundred percent. So, but you've been like creating literally before even like I was conceived as a human being. <laughs> you can't put an age on me now. <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't. They don't know how old I am. That's what you say. No, but you. No, but it's it's crazy. Like you've been creating for so long. How has that journey been for you? You know, because I, I, I found it so intriguing and so interesting just to... I, I, I'm, I have to say I've had, you know, and will continue to have as well. It's, uh, yeah. I've had the most amazing career. Yeah. And I, I grew up in Sheffield and my, my old man was a blacksmith. And yes. you know, we, we, we grew up as a relatively working class family. He, you know, oh. dad was hardworking. My, my, I have a brother, an older brother, and my, our, our mum died when I was six and he was 13. Okay. It was a kind of house of, of bachelors, if you like, with yeah, yeah, old yeah. man as a massive hams ba uh, blacksmith, and and yeah. he used to be creative in his work as well. And my brother was very creative, and I think, it, you know, I always wanted to be a creative. Okay. And the journey that that thought took me on has just been incredible. You know, I, I, I've lived, you know, in California, in Michigan, in Italy, in Germany for some time. Um, London-based, uh, Oxfordshire-based. So, I, you know, I've been all over the globe. I've visited so many countries through my, my job and my career. Worked with amazing people, met amazing people, amazing yeah. customers, designers. You know, one of the best times of my life living in California. I lived on a beach. Wow. You know, my, my, I, I never wore socks. I wore flip-flops wow. and shorts for two years. Yeah, right? and, nah, you're, yeah nah, you're my kind of guy. Same yeah. thing. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah. No, but, same. You know, and... and being creative doesn't yeah. matter what you're wearing, what you're doing, as long no. as your your output is is meaningful and has and makes a difference. And I think 100%. that's that's what's been so great. And the places I've been, the, the uh, cars I've worked on, the programs I was involved in in the new design of the bus, the TFL bus. Wow. When Boris was mayor, and, and I got together with. Um, Lord Foster and we developed and designed and won the competition. So wow. I had my finger in so many different um, avenues of design as well. It's been absolutely incredible. Wow, wow. I read um, an interview that you did a little while back and it, you said, um, as soon as I sketched my first car, I instantly knew uh, my dream job. And you were like 12 years old then. Yeah. How, and, and how were you so sure like, at, that, at, that, at that point? Well, I, I grew up loving cars because of my dad and his close friend uh, who was a mechanic and my brother's fascination with cars. I just grew up around them. Mm. 
I was so curious about how things were made, but I never made the connection that someone actually designed a car. And one day I just started sketching and doodling ideas about future transportation. Okay. And it was, in a, it was in a maths lesson on the front of my maths book. Yeah. And the maths teacher told me, stop drawing because you'll never make anything if you carry on doing that. Wow. I remember taking that sketch home and looking at it going, actually, I quite like doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I continued to just develop the ideas and thought, that's what I want to do. I want to make things. I want to have ideas that someone eventually, you become part of a team and, and it gets made. To see something go from an idea from your head yeah. to a sketch to the physical object and someone yeah. say, wow, I love that. That's, yeah. that's my passion. And, and I'm sure you are the same as me. You are the most critical about yourself and how you deliver things and what you do and, and how it sounds and what, what it's delivered like than anyone else. That, that, that's, that's me to the T. <laughs> because yeah. I'm, I'm so obsessed like, with just trying to make everything excellent. Yeah, you get what I'm saying, or like you know, not because I, I just feel like once it's released to the world, like you can't yeah, you can't take, change it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is it. And sometimes I think people never really get to like understand. No. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I first came across? Um, Aston Martins, literally in the Bond films. Yeah. I did. I didn't know because I grew up in like I grew up in. South Africa. I was born here, went back to Ghana, grew up in South Africa, and then came back here. And I literally, my mum was fascinated with Pierce Brosnan. Right. Like, she was infatuated. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with her. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with her. But she, she liked, she liked, and she liked all the Bond movies. So I knew about Sean Connery. Yeah. When no, like no one around me knew who Sean Connery was, and I knew about like the Aston Martin DB5. You know, when yeah. like, people just didn't know what that was, right? Yeah. And obviously, you've been behind the creative process for, you know, different models now, yeah? For, and so yeah. What, yeah, yeah. how's that process been? Like, you know, going from designing it, and how does that even work? Because yeah, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I was just sitting there thinking, how, 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 how does it even work for them to come and say, okay, yeah. we want this car, and then you say, all right, cool, we're going to make this particular model for, how, you know, where, yeah, I mean, explain I mean, to me the... Yeah, first, oh, yeah. first of all, I'm so happy that you, you got brought up on probably one of the best eras. Of, yeah. Aside from the era now of Daniel yeah. Craig, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, mentioning the DB5 because it is iconic and it's iconic with Bond and that's why it keeps coming back in yeah. his life. And for me, just the way you describe, you got brought up on that mm. and you're the only one that knew. Imagine being the the boy that's still inside me that's that 12 year old sketching on his book when i'm getting to design james bond's car yeah and i'm thinking about that maths teacher going ha ha yeah you know, who's laughing now yeah, and, and, yeah. And, um the first bond car i worked on was the dbs that was in casino royale got to meet daniel before anyone knew it was going to be daniel craig as the new mm. bond mm. Um, got to present the car to him in its early stages. He came along with Michael Wilson and Barbara Broccoli, who are obviously the, the owners of the franchise Eon. They came along, they came to my studio. I showed them everything and I showed them the car that um, I was designing at the time called the DBS. Mm. And, you know, Daniel, Barbara, and Michael just looked at it and said, we love it. And, and it's, it suits the new character of Bond Mm. who was a little bit more rough and ready and, uh, and, and, and more, a, a more assertive bond than had been before. You know, for me then, I, I had to keep pinching myself going home, going, hey, you know, I just met the new James Bond. Yeah. He's going to be driving my car. Yeah. And it's going to be the first time Bond gets back into an Aston Martin for several movies. Yeah. I mean, life doesn't get much better. So in, in Casino Royale, we, we built quite a few cars that obviously got destroyed, um, which was uh, oh, difficult to see. Yeah. What, yeah. So what, the, the cars that you made got like for yeah. real? Yeah. You know, the, the rollover scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some three quarter revolutions. That's all real. None of that is CGI. So how many, how many, uh, it, cars? It, it, it's a world record, six and three quarter over end over end turns. Hold on. Let me get the maths. So, correctly. Yeah. Car, six, car six, is coming. 
coming along and, oh, no, it, no. It, and it goes like this and that, goes yeah. end over end six yep. and three quarter times then lands on its roof and the stunt yep. driver inside was all okay everything was fine and that's the scene they actually used in the movie and we we have that car still um so it's uh, all the cars are kept whether they're crashed smashed up we keep all the cars between ourselves and eon wow why yeah. just to look at them yeah just to look at them no, how does that feel when you like, just see like your creation just being <laughs> yeah, that's, apart? that's that's the bit when you do this you know okay 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 yeah no that's mad wow yeah. you, you know like i thought that was what was cgi did they have CGI? Back yeah, then? there was still CGI, but part of the, the, as with today's movie or the movie that will come out now in November, mm. the, the real um, genius of the Eon creation and the Bond movies is that 90, let's call it over 90% of the scenes that you see are actual scenes. It's not CGI. There may be enhancements, obviously, but the majority of work you see are real stunts. Wow. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. I think obviously now we're actually talking about the swing of these cars, yeah. I yeah. wanted to, I proper wanted to ask you because you've produced so many different cars, yeah? yeah? Like, and especially for Aston Martin, we're talking about like the Rapid, the, yeah. the DBS, the, the new Vanquish, the new V12, Vantage, the Rapid S. The, yeah. I'm just showing you my knowledge because I know my stuff. Yes. I know my <laughs> No, no, and um, um, the one seven seven, which I reckon is actually like one of my favorites, yeah. Um, and then you know it goes to like something like the Signet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now maybe we won't talk about that one. No, no, no. We're just I like... want to actually do no, I want to talk about that. Yeah, the Signet. Yeah, but b before you talk about the Signet, yeah. actually, no. Let me talk about the Signet first. Yeah. Why? So anyone that's watching this that doesn't know what the signet is, the signet, I would say, is like an Aston Martin smart car. Yes, that's exactly it. That's In a exactly nutshell. It. And and the why at the time was, it was as the the kind of world was changing in terms of access to cities and congestion charging, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And just really before the advent of, of electrification into cars or yeah. electric cars existed, but not as, as uh, proliferant as they are now, we wanted a solution for people who lived in the city, wanted the comfort of their Aston Martin, but couldn't drive a sports car around the city. Okay. So it has uh, all Aston Martin leather inside. It's got a grill etc etc it has the aston martin wings it has all the comfort that you can park it outside your london city home free of the congestion charge because it's under two meters long so that oh. was that was the idea at the time right um, but thankfully the time has moved on right 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 right, right. No, but that's, what... that's a it's a collector's car now so if you see one they're incredibly rare cars i've never seen one before no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what it is. It's, it's, yeah. I hope I see one one day. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so what, what is like your favorite model out of, out well, of these ones that I've, I've just named? What, 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 what you know, you, I, th I think. You reckon, I, I reckon, yeah. Should I tell you what I think? Oh, your favorite? Yeah, I want to hear your, your. I reckon, I think your favorite might be the 177. Yeah, oh, am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, yeah. and I think it, it's because it was a game-changing car. It was yeah. the first um, all-carbon fiber chassis car we'd ever done. Mm. It was the first non-heritage car that was sold for over a million pounds. When it, when it first came out, it was 1.2 million pounds. Wow. It was one of the most limited production cars we'd ever done in terms of a series production. You only made um, 77, right? 77 of them. Right. It was a unique engine developed in conjunction with Cosworth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds incredible. It feels incredible. And it has an amazing proportion. Mm. And the language was not typical of an Aston Martin. It's quite hard edged. Mm. It has, you know, everything has a beautiful crease in it, like an amazing suit. Mm. But when you see the car, the engine is so low, a big naturally aspirated V12, so low and 
the front of the car with a long hood and the swept back tail and the exterior is all um, handcrafted aluminium so you've got this high-tech core or inner mm. carbon fiber f1 technologies materials in the engine ceramics um, uh, gold leaf heat heat uh, restraints etc etc and on the outside this beautiful handcrafted aluminium skin wow. so almost the antithesis of what you would typically expect mm. and and for me that's why we, we said with that car, there would be no uh, B surfaces. Mm -hmm. What's a B surface? I was just about to ask you that. A B what? surface is the inside of something. Okay. You don't treat the inside as well as the outside. Okay. Yeah, so on, on the 177, when you open the hood, when yep. you open the doors, yep. all those parts that you normally look at and think, no, they're not so attractive, we designed everything. Absolutely everything was designed to have a, an A-class finish. Okay. Okay, yeah. I get you. Have you still got a 177? Did you, did you get one? No, I didn't, unfortunately. So you made the car and you didn't keep one? That's right, yeah. Why? Yeah, that, this is what you'll then find out about the designers. The designers typically, sometimes you, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I get to change my car every three to four months. So I, I like to keep moving forward. And at some point, yeah, it would be nice to go back and, find a 177 for sale somewhere. Yeah, that's what, well, couldn't you like, I've got them to just make like a 78th model. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Back. I actually should think about that. Yeah, just say, yeah. you know, okay, the quote is 77. Yeah. I need one for my, put yeah. one in, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's so interesting to kind of almost hear you, you describe the, just the process about cars and stuff, just all the little bit, it's kind of like how I, I'll describe like a meal. You know, just yeah, some yeah. rice with some yeah. chicken and some, yeah. and it, 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 it's just the finer, the finer details of everything. What is your creative process? So I'm, just I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you mentioned a, a meal then as well. Yeah, food because yeah. I like I like food. You know, yeah, I, I I always draw the analogy with any creative with mm -hmm. with food with chefs mm -hmm. because. The creative process for a chef is you can give them the same ingredients, mm. but over 10 chefs, mm. each one will make a different flavor with that ingredient. They will make it taste, feel, look completely differently. Mm. And a car is the same ingredients, really, but they all look different. Mm. And it's what the flavor you put on it. So my, my uh, ethos of design is always about creativity first. You can show beauty through proportion and you don't have to try and hide it then beauty comes from the golden ratio the golden section if you get that right everyone sees what you design as beautiful and and therefore that's my process two seconds man the golden ratio yeah what is that so that it's, just went like over my head so we just, <laughs> let's just rewind <laughs> so i mean without getting too technical and going into a lecture yeah, it's um, Fibonacci's law of, of relationships and ratio. And there's a spiral that follows that. And you, you'll see that through generations, artists have followed this because na nature actually produces beauty every single day. And if you look back to a nautilus shell and you look at uh, Fibonacci's law and spiral, they fit exactly together. So it's a mathematical... Um, relationship that gives you beauty and in in roughly it's a one-third to two-third proportional relationship okay typically you will see i'm going to do it now typically you'll see in, in a in a uh, a brilliant um piece of art that the subject is over here yes it's it's not it's not always in the center because that's one-third to two-thirds so it's it its relationship is and you're probably looking there yes yeah. The building is on the left. There you go. And that yeah. is the subject. That's the subject. What 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 would you say like are like your just like your general kind of inspirations like where do you take like for me my inspirations a lot of the time is I'm I'm I almost have to I I just call it zone out. I zone out no phones. And sometimes I just sit there and I can just look at something or a particular situation 
and just take something from that and be able to just create from there. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. where do you draw your actual inspiration well, from? I think inspiration can come from anywhere. Any, any form of design that is looking at something differently to the way you typically do what you do every day mm -hmm. and you find that as inspiration. I'm, I'm inspired by a, a walk down the street. You wow. know, I'm inspired by meeting people. Wow. Understanding their viewpoint of something. Wow. And you've already put some inspiration in me. You've said, you know, I was born here. I went back to Ghana. I was fascinated by DB5 and nobody else knew about the DB5, but I did. That, yeah. that inspires me to want to make more people know about things they didn't know about. 100%. I'm going to just ask you some quick fire questions. Yeah? Let's do this. You ready? I am. And look at your bracing yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you're bracing yourself. Uh, I helmet here. I put my helmet on. Yeah, yeah. No, let's get it cracking. So, yeah. what was the first car you drove? Uh, 1966 Austin Healey Sprite. And how much did it cost? Oh, uh, my brother and I restored it. It cost us about 150 quid to buy. Yeah. What car did your dad drive? Ah, uh, he. The last car he had was a Vauxhall Victor 101. Did you pass the driving test first time? You know what? I, it took me three attempts because I took my test in that Austin Healey Sprite yep. and I failed twice. Once because the rear lights didn't work, yep. and then because the front indicator didn't work, yep. and then the third time I pitched up, everything worked and I passed. What other, other, what other designers inspire you? I'm inspired by uh, Gandini, uh, Norman Foster, uh, Richard Rogers, their architects. Um, I'm a massive fan of um, Ross Lovegrove. Um, if I keep going, the Savile Row tailors, you know, they're not oh, specific snap. designers, but yeah, yeah. They, are, they are, for me, they're, they're experts at what they do. What is actually your favorite place that you've actually stayed in? It's gotta be on the beach in Laguna. Favorite drink? Gin and tonic. Favorite, favorite place in the UK? Peak District, uh, not far away from Sheffield. Cat or dogs? Oh, dog. Ham or tuna? Oh, uh, oh, tuna. <laughs> Cars or motorbikes? Oh my goodness. Uh, today, motorbikes. Motorbikes or speedboats? Oh, motorbikes. Last one. If you are on an island and you could just have one car, just one. Oh. One car with you, oh. yeah, on this island for the rest of your life. Yeah, what car would it be? Uh, DB4, not a GT, standard DB4, the classic gentleman's car. So, now this SUV, the 106 years of the company just kind of yep. being around and existing, yeah. Right? yeah, you've now just chosen to release an SUV, yeah, yeah, why? Well, what, what was the, the thinking behind it? I mean, it, it's, it's definitely the right time. Okay. And, and as with many things, like a great wine, the more it matures, the better it is. Yeah. Um, you know, why now? The, I mean, the world has changed. The consumer is changing. We're typically 95% male oriented. Yeah. It may suit more the needs of a female CEO, et cetera, et cetera, because mm -hmm. they have different needs mm. there's it's more concern for family for sharing etc so we mm. want more of a, a, a mixed um kind of split 50 50 between male and female consumer nice yeah nice. what would you actually want your legacy to be oh wow because you've had you've done so much amazing things thus far yeah and yeah. you know you're not stopping anytime soon you no, I'm, I'm not stopping. No, you're not stopping anytime soon. No, 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 no way. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think the legacy would be, you know, it, it's it's very much about. I, I would say proud to be British design, you know, mm -hmm. and and within an, a, a global company that has its heart in the UK, it's about um, inspiring people to to want the beauty in our cars and to desire the beauty in our cars and we've made around 95,000 cars wow. in 106 years wow. and you know that's a couple of days production for a mass manufacturer like Toyota or someone you know wow. they, they make close to 10 million cars a year and in 106 years in fact I think we're 107 years old now wow. we've made 
95,000 cars only. So the legacy is that the cars I've been involved in and my team and the companies been involved in will, will be with us forever. Collectors in 50 years will be mm. presenting DB11s as their pride and joys in, in future car, car shows and Concours. Mm. And I think then to say, you know, this was created intellectually in the UK, British craftsmen and women building this car with love, with passion, and to inspire someone else to want to do the same. That's, that's, you know, that's what I want to leave as a legacy. No, that's beautiful. That's amazing. And you know, this is a personal question I wanted to ask you as well, yeah? Um, Because I know we we, we have to wrap up soon. I'm kind of upset because I'm proper in the conversation, yeah. (laughs) um, So, like, in in regards to just kind of like your your creative process, what do you do when it comes to you having like a creative block? What I actually do is I just stop. I, I go do something completely different. You know, I've, I've got quite a few bicycles. I like to cycle. Um, I'm actually designing and creating my own home in Henley on Thames at the minute. Oh my so goodness. I, I have to touch yeah, on that in a second. Sometimes I go, I go do a little bit yeah, more yeah, yeah. in terms of the thinking behind that. I find that putting something down, going and doing something else helps to come back to that. And, and music, you know, and, and I, I am so, um, much of mu- I have to have music in my life. Okay. And I listen to everything and anything. I, I because I just love the different sounds. I'm really into a, a, an Italian singer called Ultimo at the minute, and his okay. music is just incredible. He's like a, a poet okay. that sings, and and I, I, it's just so many different forms of music. Sad to hear Bill Withers dying the other week as well. He, I was a massive, massive fan of his music and. So uh, music is, is always one of the keys to unblocking something for sure. You listen to any rap? I do, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit hero shy because obviously I'm looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good one. The way you say, I'm looking at him. No, I like it. That was a good one. I'm going to use that. You're looking at him, yeah? You have to come to my studio and I'm I want to I would love you to do this and for me to ask you my questions. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Now we'll make it happen. So Eric. Michael, I would like to say thank you and it's been a true honor because um huge amount of respect for you and what you do and how you entertain, how you make people laugh and the music that you create as well. And it, it's been my honor, to be honest. As you said, you talked about inspiration. And I think the more the world has people like you, the more I'll be inspired. Wow, that's, that's, that's touched me a lot. Um, thank you for your time, the inspiration. I, I was really, really looking forward to it. And you know, it, I think it's great just to have a conversation with, you know, someone that is such an experienced design and creator and you know a revolutionary i would describe it but then so down to earth and yeah. it's just so open you know and thank you for that man it's 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 been so nice and for anyone that's gonna watch this yeah man this guy's a top man so thank you man thank you i'm gonna come to um yeah yeah you you are yeah 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 now yeah. you know where it is yeah yeah i'm, I'm yeah. gonna pull up so you know right. yeah, yeah. But we're gonna Not be yeah. Yeah. that yeah that yeah we'll be there <laughs>